am Liz Wright. Welcome to Live Your Best Life. The only thing that matters now is living by the power of this wonderful new creation life. We're going to become an undefeatable force of radiating glory, and we are rising up strong now in this hour. Hi, family. Thanks for tuning in all over the world to this week's episode of Live Your Best Life with me, Liz Wright. And it is this this conversation for me today is such a treat. One of my favorite people in the world is joining me for what I know is going to be quite life changing for you as Holy Spirit pours through him. He's one of the leadership of Bethel Church. He's a pastor there with his beautiful wife. He's also part of the leadership of Bethel School of the Supernatural. It's obviously one of my favorite places in the world. It's my joy to welcome into the conversation with me today, Richard Gordon. Richard, welcome. Hey, thank you, Liz. (laughs) Love you. You are wonderful, mystical, all the above. You're my people. (laughs) <laughs> thank you thank you oh my goodness we love you too and just so honor who you are Richard love just love the humility that you walk in and the hunger for Jesus it's contagious and I just love it you and Libby you know you just you exemplify Jesus's love just the way that you are so in love with him and so laid down you know in your hearts before him and you just let him flow and take over and want that right you just want him to take over the wherever you are the space that you're in and just change lives it's just beautiful you guys are the real deal it's very inspirational so I wanted to just talk to you Richard about um, some of the the message that you're carrying really at the moment the way that you're experiencing Jesus and what he's showing you and some of what you were sharing when you were on our IMC with us was just amazing so and so funny as well and inspiring but there was something I'm going to read a quote I wrote down when you were listening when you were talking and you said the way that we see Jesus is the way that we'll reveal Jesus Mm. like the way that he's he has pursued us and we've experienced him it becomes like the core expression of our life, right? It's the way we reveal him. And I'd never even thought about that. But so can you speak, can you just share a little bit more of what you were sharing with us around that? Because it's just beautiful. And it's true. Yeah, I'd love to. Um, man, I'm just kind of taking it in. Just being here, it's just wild that I get to do this with you. So thank you. Oh, um, and you. Holly, thank you. Uh, maybe before that, let me just pray. Mm, yeah. The Holy Spirit, Uh, every person that's listening to this frequency, God, I thank you. Uh, This wouldn't be words from a man and a woman, but God, we ask that your divine frequency would weave into our sound. And God, as we start to speak, it wouldn't be wisdom from man, but God, there would be this glory from the son of man just getting released, God. So God, I, I boldly ask that this would be more than words, but these words would come almost flesh and people. There'd be encounters. There'd be the miraculous that would come from the God. I, I raise my faith, Jesus, that these words and this podcast, these sounds that would come out would not just be earthly sounds, but they would carry something of the heavens, God. And that even bodies, that bodies that are locked up in trauma or bodies that are locked up in trauma that is manifest in sickness, and the sound of this God, there would be a awakening and a breaking. There'd be a talita come, an awakening of dead things where God would say, no, she's just sleeping. Awaken, child. So God, I just thank you. This would be more than a conversation with an amazing uh, friend, God, uh, Liz. But God, I thank you, Jesus. You would be in this so lavishly, so wildly, God. Oh, we just invite you in, Jesus. God, we don't want just professionalism. We want you, Jesus. We want all of you, Jesus. We want the wild Jesus. I love it. I love who you are. Oh, man. man. This, This, as you can probably tell, guys, is your moment for encounter it's an we, we, that's what we're doing every single time we create we, we have one of these conversations we're creating a moment in time that jesus can crash in on right that's our yes. heart that yes. he will 
crash in on our lives and you will encounter him. So just, yeah, yeah just be wild, Richard. We love you. Oh, Mark. thank you. Amen oh, to everything man. you just prayed. Yes, Jesus, come. Ooh. Yes, Jesus, take over our lives. Yes, Jesus, speak to us that we will be never the same after this little moment in time. Holy. Mm. Thank you, God. Your last time I was with you, Liz, me and Libby just spoke about our love for each other. Yeah. I got so many people messaging me from your uh, Instagram message me from your um, from that podcast just saying just your love story has inspired us and I was like yeah. you never realize you know the way you see Jesus is the way that you end up revealing him and I you know I saw him as a husband uh, he pursued me that's might sound out of the box but he's pursued me almost in a romantic way where he 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 wooed me he wooed me into greater depths with him and i've heard women speak like that but i haven't heard a lot of men speak like that but he wooed me he wooed me closer into an intimate place and and uh, it's my greatest honor that i get to do that to my queen my wife she's libby she's the most powerful person i've ever met and you're listening you'll know her love her and you know um, i get to do that for her and i get to love her into loveliness and that's what God has done for me. That's what Jesus has done for me. He's loved me into loveliness. He's loved me into a place. That's why I counsel people that are going to get married or single and, and um, they're like, oh, this person hasn't got all their stuff together just yet. And I'm like, well, we get the honor and privilege of being the hands and the feet of Jesus to love someone yeah. into a place of loveliness. Yeah. Oh, what a joy. Yeah. Do you know, you know, so I was saying to uh, you um, uh, with your group earlier, man, mm -hmm. that is a dynamic group that you've got going on yeah. these Fridays. Dynamic. Yeah. I, love, I love our IMC family. They're amazing. And yeah. uh, I was saying to them that the way that you see Jesus will be the way that you reveal Jesus. And I am totally convinced that the world does not need a fresh teaching the world needs the teacher that yeah. the world doesn't need a message from a man. They need a message from the son of man that they don't need uh, to another meeting. They need to meet him that the world needs an encounter with Jesus. Yeah. And it sounds really good on a billboard, but if you break your life down, the gospel is so intentional through the, all of the old covenant, through the new covenant, every prophetic word, every moment, the, the, um, everything aligns, the genealogy, everything that God does is so wildly intentional. No mistake or haphazard. No, like uh, it's so intentional, the whole story of the gospel. And I thought to myself, because he revealed to me that, I thought, I wonder if my story is intentional. I wonder if the gospel pursuing me yeah. was as intentional as the gospel written through the scriptures. And I started to do this study and I realized that the way people, God pursues people is often the way God wants them to reveal him for the rest of their days. Yeah. And so you might be like, oh, that's such a simple concept, but that's, he's in so intentionally loving of people and if I had to interview you not right now Riddlers, I could ask you what's your favorite thing about Jesus I could ask you how did God pursue you and then I could literally tell you this is what your ministry is supposed to be because yeah. he's yeah. totally intentional with his pursuit with each of us and so my story is I walked into a church conservative church and they're all singing and while they were singing my first time ever being in a church 17 years old at an orange mohawk and uh, now i've got dreadlocks look at that god you've transformed me <laughs> <laughs> and while they're singing I, I have this feeling all over my body and it's the presence of god but i didn't know it so out of my mouth comes a swear word like, holy beep i think it's real and it sent me on this pursuit for the presence, which landed me finding I needed Jesus 
So I reluctantly accepted Jesus only to fall madly in love with my best friend, the most incredible, kindest, no, keeper of no wrongs, most empowering man in the entire world. And uh, now my whole life is about introducing a people to the presence of God. And I have a belief system that was established from the beginning of his pursuit in me that everyone can encounter the presence. Yes. I didn't yeah. even know the gospel. I was in a conservative 104-year-old church standing at the back and he touched me. And for the last 15 years, I've been going around revealing to people, you need a touch from the presence of God. Oh, my God. And uh, can I share one more thing? Yes, no, do. Just uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. on a roll. Go, that, man. <laughs> it's beautiful. We think that um, our encounters are to be stories we tell. But every encounter with Jesus is not for a story to be told, but he wants to transform and transfigure me. Yeah. He is so pursuit, not on a destination, but on a journey of transformation. That's why he's called the way, Jesus, mm -hmm. the way, because it's all about the, the journey. And when I get encountered by God, it's not a story to be told. It's an identity of who I become. Yes. And yes. so when I first got filled with the Holy Spirit uh, in a radical way, I was 23, got touched in a, my first prophetic meeting, seven days I shook under the power of God, seven days I, sh I sweated under the heat of heaven, and I saw these angels feeding me scrolls. I went on this highway of glory, and uh, God said, I'm going to make you like a John the Baptist. You're going to raise up valleys, uh, 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 lower mountains. You're going to create a highway of the glory of God. Started seeing miracles, but the craziest thing happened to me is I was studying my master's degree and I was going to quit. But then the Lord arrested me a night in a dream and uh, an angel handed me a scroll, I opened it up, and God said, This is a telecommunications algorithm. It's for your master's degree. Um, and I read it and I woke up in a cold sweat. And that algorithm became the cornerstone of the book that I wrote that I got published around the world and, and uh, the technology that I, I used. And so I share that story to be like, wow, God, that's crazy. <laughs> I was joking with someone. They were like, I was still living with my parents at that stage. You know, I wasn't like, I wasn't killing it at laugh. <laughs> like, I wasn't like this amazing hero. But God loves to touch broken places and encounter broken people. That was me. He so I get touched with this technology miracle, but it's not a story that I tell. Mm. It's who I've become. Yeah. I have become a walking revival in the tech space. Yeah. And I haven't just had a seven day encounter. I have become a walking encounter. Yeah. Now that anyone that meets me, has the possibility of going into 14 day encounters, 20 day encounters. And that's the story of my life. And then the story of the technology is I was at Bethel being at BSSM, a pastor, and we had this crazy idea to start a technology school that incorporates revival. And in a little mountain town of 100,000 people, we started technology boot camp that marries high character and high skill. And we marry this together and we are launching revivalists into the tech space, changing legacy in their hearts and putting legacy in their hand finances, where we have an 80% placement with an average starting salary of $70,000 and over a thousand students that have come through. I just didn't have a technology encounter 12 years ago. I became, that was my identity shifted. Yeah. I am actually now a birthplace for revival in the tech space. And so yeah. the way Jesus encounters you is the way he reveals them to you. I encountered him in that way. And now a whole tech school comes. Right. I'm like, right. God has the craziest plans for mm -hmm. us. And I'm starting to realize 
I just need a bunch of people to encounter Jesus because yeah. then just imagine what will be birthed yeah. in three yeah. years' time, nine months' time, and two months' time. Yeah, because our supernatural identity is birthed in that moment of encounter, isn't it? And he sets us on a trajectory for our eternal destiny. We just, I love what you said, Richard. We we don't have an encounter that becomes a story. We have an encounter that transforms our life. Yes. You know, and that we become the message. We we become his word, his experience to our heart. Yes. We incarnate that. You know, it's I was thinking when you were saying that, I thought that's profound. So like you asked me, what is my favorite thing about Jesus? How yes. did Jesus, how has Jesus encountered me? And I think, you know, for the same for all of us, right, it's it's a really worthwhile conversation to have with Jesus and just to reflect on that, because it helps you really understand, like you said, the intentionality of Jesus yeah. in our lives that, you know, he's absolutely intentional in the way he pursues us. We were predestined to experience each one of us, an aspect of his heart, an aspect of his nature that we would then showcase in the world, you know, like you are in the most profound way now. And when you were so when you were talking I thought what is it you know trying to like really get real and it's love you know I experienced Jesus's love as love oh. when I and and I know the love of Jesus that is what consumes me that's what I'm addicted to you know the only addiction that's legitimate you know I'm absolutely addicted to Jesus um to his love experiencing him and in that moment, he passion, he switched on a passion inside of me to, to bring people, as you know, into the experience of his love, to taste and see and experience and be fulfilled in him and be set free. You know, these, like, you know, we were, when you were sharing with us in our IMC time, you know, you were saying how you were so broken, you know, Jesus came into your brokenness, like he came into my brokenness and to <clears throat> most of us, you know, none of us have got yeah. it together, right? If we're really honest, we are all messes when Jesus comes into our yeah. lives and begins to love us into, into wholeness and just, ah, oh, he's just amazing. And I was, there's something else that you shared, Richard, and I thought, oh my goodness, that's amazing. When I was listening to you, you were talking about God's really bad decisions <laughs> <laughs> in the it's lives of all like the that. people in the Bible. Like can you just can you just share that? I think it's yeah. amazing. It gives us all so much hope. Yeah. Yeah. I think in growing up in the South African culture, the stronger and more perfect you were, the more promotion you got. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think it's and like, like I, that all I mean, over. Isn't it? Yeah. Came to Reading, in the kingdom. <laughs> and um, yeah, it is, it's everywhere, Commonwealth and all of us. Mm -hmm. uh, I came to Reading, California, and I realized at Bethel the people that were getting promoted weren't um, portraying perfection. And it started me on a journey of looking at the gospel and realizing what is God, who does God choose? And um, <clears throat> this has been wrecking me recently. It's the story of Jesus' birth. For thousands of years, God's preparing intentionally, making uh, preparation for glory to be wrapped in flesh and arrive to the earth. There's thousands of years, there's prophecy upon prophecy, detail upon detail, a genealogy of, uh, of this name and that name and this name and that name, a whole book of Leviticus that I don't even fully understand of do this and don't do this, a temple that has perfect measurements and everything is set up intentionally for this moment that Christ would come to the earth, a glory wrapped in flesh, that God himself would limit himself to physical human form, fully man, fully God, and then arrive, boosh, bursting forth. So significant that his name is the most famous name in all of history. That his very name has become a swear word all across culture. It carries such power and influence that his name divides our timeline before Christ and after Christ AD. It's like 
there is the big arrival moment. This is the moment that divides the timeline. And there's this moment where Joseph knocks on the inn door. He says, my wife, she's with child. Do you have room in the inn? And the innkeeper looks and he looks through his book and he realizes there's no space. And Joseph and Mary have to go into the manger. And I thought to myself, God, have you made a mistake? <laughs> Surely for thousands of years, you had all this intentionality. For thousands of years. Surely this, this feels like a mistake. Or did man make a mistake? Did Joseph take the wrong route? Was there another place for him? You know, like, because this is the king about to be born. This is the greatest moment of all of history. Right. That God would come in bodily form. And there's no room in the inn. I'm not like, this looks like a, a folly. Like, what is this? And the Lord said to me, I made no mistake. I came for unprepared places. Oof. Wow. And still today, Jesus comes for unprepared places. And still today, Christ is born in mangers like me. And in a manger, a messy place that wasn't supposed to be for humans, not a, let alone, you know, many people who are listening may have seen a, a birth, a delivery, let alone for a birth to happen in a dirty place like a manger. And the Christ is born amongst the mess. And for unto us, a son is born. And for unto us, a child is given. And he will be called everlasting father and wonderful counselor and mighty God and prince of peace. And when I read that scripture, I think of this palace. But it's in a manger. He is born in a messy place. He is everlasting father in a messy place. He is mighty God in a messy place. He is wonderful counselor. In a messy place, he is prince of peace. Oh, I still today, still today, he chooses mangers to be born. Yeah. Oh, my yeah. love yeah. is a manger story. Yeah. It's like I should not be on this podcast. I should <laughs> not be the person a bunch of people are listening to. If I was in front of more than five people, I'd stammer, stammer, I'd stutter and stammer. I was riddled with anxiety and fear. I just, I'm, I prayed that I would even have friends, let alone people listen to me. That makes no sense. But he took a Moses and said, you'll be a leader of a nation. Right. That's a bad idea, God. <laughs> <laughs> To be born in a manger, it's a bad idea. <laughs> you go right throughout the scriptures and you start looking, you know, there's David and this, the prophet Samuel comes to David's house and he speaks to the dad and he's like, bring all your sons. One of them's going to be king. And his dad doesn't even believe in David. His mm -hmm. own dad doesn't see greatness in this man. His dad saw him grow up. And he's like, this kid, he hasn't, he will never be a king. Bring out all my other sons. And, and God with the anointing through the prophets, like, that's none of these, you have another son. It's the bad idea of who's going to be the king. Oh my God, that's a terrible idea. <laughs> but from creation, he picked up dust yeah. and blew. Yeah. And Adam was born. Yeah created and still today he picks up dust me yeah. mess and he goes right. liz you'll be a voice to the generation and you're like but i'm i just came from a brokenness and misuse and abuse and me i'll right. take dust and i'll breathe on right. it Ruh up. Right. Right. and the nations will be touched i'll choose this manger to be born in and we think God, you're coming into the palace. I need to get my life perfect. 
I've got to get everything together. I have to have all my ducks in a row. And he's like, you know what? That, that killer of Christians, Saul, he's perfect to write the New Testament. I'll choose him. Bam! And a bad idea becomes the vehicle for the gospel. Ah, wow. An uneducated Simon. He's a fisherman with no education, unchosen by the rabbis as a young. He's like, that liar lied three times. That liar, he'll lead the church. That's just a bad idea. <laughs> Abraham, way too old. Sarah, way too old. Josiah, way too young. It's just a series of bad ideas to prove that this gospel is not about powerful people, but it's about a powerful God. And it gives me a lot of hope because yeah. I'm like, God, I'm, I feel like a manger. <laughs> yes, I don't have my life to give to God, but use yeah. me and be born in me. <laughs> Oh, my goodness. I just love this perspective. It's the truth, isn't it? And it does. It just gives you so much hope. And you know, don't you I mean, like you shared, you know, and my background's the same. I mean, I used to, there was no way in a million years I thought I would ever be speaking in front of people, <laughs> let alone the thousands and thousands and thousands. Jesus, yeah, I would have definitely looked at the Lord and said, yeah, that's not a good idea, Jesus. <laughs> There's definitely better people, better people for this position. But actually, it's like what you said, isn't it? It's just he breathes through us with his spirit. And we as we learn to just yield and enjoy him and let go and let him. And even that is grace, right? He gives us the grace. He takes over and just deity expresses through our lives through our humble laid down little tiny lives oh. huge magnificent god chooses to display his splendor through us it's just mm. mind-blowing and invite us into the partnership right of the restoration of all things it just oh. this is his, the desire of his heart he's like i want to fit you on like a glove i'm inside you now i trust my capacity in you <laughs> to do my will that i want you to enjoy the journey of you know with me it's just beautiful oh my goodness richard i could talk to you for hours i just i love how you, i love your relationship with jesus and what he shares with you it's a beautiful and how authentic you are in libya are you just living your life and then sharing out of that yeah on you it's not that's why there's impartation when you speak it's not something you've learned it's something you live all the yeah, time yeah. every day in oh, such a wow. vulnerable beautiful open way that yeah models to us so much the power of vulnerability actually i think among oh, many wow. other things but We've got about two minutes left, Richard. I just want to ask, would you pray for everybody again? I know you did at the beginning, Absolutely. but can we just finish with you just praying? It'd be so precious. Yeah, I'd love to. The Bible says that um, in our weakness, his power is made perfect. Yeah. Passion Translation says our weakness is a portal for God's power. So right now, if you're listening to the sound of my voice, we're going to open a portal for God's power. I want you to think of your weakness. I want you to think of that which disqualifies you and your insecurity. And we're going to open this portal and we're going to welcome God's power into it. And bodies will be healed and souls will be healed because Jesus did not die for the healthy. He came for the sick. And that means he did not come for just all your greatness and your strength. He came to be born in your manger. Oh, right now, God. I ask that the doors of the manger would fling open, Jesus, of every heart. The messy places of the heart would fling open, God. The insecure places would fling open, God. And Jesus, you would come and be born in that place. You would be born as everlasting father and wonderful counselor, prince of peace and the broken. God, that you would be born as mighty God and those that need healing. And in the weakness, God, I pray for an encounter with the Holy Ghost. God, I pray for an encounter with the Spirit of God. God, I pray that they would radically encounter Jesus, that bodies would get healed. And right now I'm even hearing that women that have struggled to have birth, that have struggled to fall pregnant, 
God, I just release healing in Jesus' name. Roll the stone away, God. Or you still roll stones today. Oh, Jesus, come in your love and come in your lavishness. I ask for a waterfall, not a whisper, just to be poured out of your love on heads and on hearts. And I pray that you would not just hear a word, that you'd not just hear a meeting, that you wouldn't just hear words. But God, I pray that Jesus would encounter them so that they would be able to reveal him to the world. Oh, in Jesus' name, under the sound of my voice, God, encounter a people. Encounter a people with your love. Encounter a manger people, a people that don't have their lives together. Touch them and use them, God. I'm even hearing a woman that's come from divorce, and God saying, I'm going to use you. I'm going to move through you. Oh, Spirit of God, touch her now in Jesus' name. Oh, God, touch everyone that's listening, God. And I bless you from my family to your family of revival. I bless you to thrive and to see him rightly. Mm. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Wow. And I just oh, want it's too good to be true. Uh, yeah. Can't take my eyes off of you. He's like <laughs> heaven to touch. I want to hold him so much. And now that love has arrived, I thank God I'm alive. He's too good to be true. Can't take my eyes off of you. Ah! Oh, yes. <laughs> so that song is going to be in your head now, guys, for the next two days, at least, I'm sure. Oh, man. Oh, Richard, you're amazing. Thank you so much for just being on with us and just sharing your beautiful relationship with Jesus with all of us. It's such a joy to be with you every time. Every oh, time. Thank you. Oh, bless you, Liz. And bless everyone that's listening. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. And we really, really, really do bless you. Have the most amazing week experiencing Jesus. And I do, I do Richard's prayer. I pray that you will see yourself through the eyes of Jesus heart this week as well. You'll know how valued you are, how loved you are, how he sees you, because when you're there with him, as many of you will know, the way he sees us is very different to how we see ourselves. You were the dream in his heart before the foundation of the world. So I pray that you will experience that this week and you'll experience, understand the intentionality of Jesus in your life and how he's pursued you and what he wants to reveal of himself through your life. So have an amazing week. Can't wait to be with you next week. God bless. Hi, if you really enjoyed today's show and you want to go deeper with Jesus and experience his love and his presence more than you ever have, then I have a present for you, a free gift. If you want to jump over to experiencinggodslove.com and just click on and sign up, then you will receive one of my teaching videos that I have created especially for you that will not only give you a few keys just very, very quickly that you can uh, utilize in your daily walk with the Lord, um, but also I'm going to take you there as well. So it's an activation. So yeah, so jump over to experiencinggodslove.com and you are going to be so blessed.